Eggs are weird. Reptile eggs are even weirder, with their generally leathery and malleable soft surface versus avian eggs and the crazy range of shapes and sizes that they come in. But did you know that reptile eggs can talk? Reptile eggs come in many forms, and that's only in the oviparous species, as a plethora are oviviviparous or even viviparous. Despite these wide-ranging methods of reproduction, we humans have kind of considered eggs to be simple things that once laid just need the right temperatures and moisture to survive and hatch. But it turns out that once a reptile egg is holding an embryo, some weird things can happen between the egg and mother and between the eggs in the clutch themselves. In captivity, we often take eggs away from the mother snake. For example, we pull them apart from each other, placing them into some form of box to be incubated in lovely, perfect lines, or in near isolated pods. And this has worked extremely well for tons of species in ensuring success in hatch and survival rates. But does separating the eggs have unforeseen consequences? Thus far, studies say yes, and more than anything show that we know very little about how eggs and the embryos inside work, despite us incubating millions since the beginning of herpeticulture. People have wondered why snake and lizard eggs are often physically stuck together, and some obvious conclusions have been to stick the clutch in one place so that it doesn't move around, protecting them from physical damage both when being laid and if disturbed. However, an egg is not just a solid container with an embryo growing inside. Eggs are covered in pores, which allow for a wide range of functions, including respiration, as eggs do breathe in and out, liquid exchange, and for sensory information. Sensory information such as how their clutch mates are developing. A brilliant study published in 2016 showed multiple effects on snake egg clutches that are kept together as laid, such as the ability to synchronize hatching through communication between the embryos in the clutch via vibrations, so that they will change metabolic rates and hatch at the same time, which in the wild aids in survival chance of the whole clutch rather than when leaving the clutch individually. This does have implications for captive keeping, as the study found that snakes whose eggs were separated to be incubated alone essentially had the known signs of only child syndrome, being less sociable, staying away from other snakes including clutch mates, which could have captive caused consequences for later cohabitation. Other noted effects could potentially affect other aspects such as neonate success, longevity and growth rates, as the same study found that the lone hatched snakes had differing heart rates and utilised less of their yolk. It is thought that this may be another side of egg communication. A lone egg may not be able to form social bonds with conspecifics. Thus, this may show an environment with high predator presence and low resources. So these lone hatching snakes may know that they must disperse further after hatching to attempt to leave the dangerous environment. Eggs are complex living things, not just boxes soon to release a living thing. These notes have also been shown from other reptile egg studies on species such as skinks, turtles, crocodilians, and a wide range of snake species. Not only can reptiles be extremely social creatures, but this begins in the egg or in the mother. Some reptiles do show true viviparity. One such is the northernmost lizard species in the world, the common lizard or Zootoka vivipara. A study on this species, which included exposing a number of gravid females to smell cues from lizard-eating snakes, showed that the mother could actually influence the development of their young due to environmental cues. Neonates from mothers exposed to those stressors actually grew significantly longer tails, were less active, thus more often hidden, 
had lower preferred body temperatures, thus could bask for less time, and would disperse into the environment three times further than the control. This isn't the only weird thing about them though, as the same species can be oviparous in the south of their range instead of viviparous. One species live birthing in one place, laying eggs in another, depending on which method will succeed most. So, if reptile eggs can somewhat sense the world around them, how else can this affect the young after hatching? Rhabdophis tigrinus, or the tiger keelback snake, a truly poisonous snake, was shown in a 2014 study to, while gravid, actively hunt and seek out toxic toad prey over more easily found non-toxic amphibian species, so as to provide an amount of the toxic compounds they take from the toads to the neonates inside them through the egg membrane, providing them a toxic defence before being laid. Another example of sensory communication between the egg membrane is from studies in 1998 and 2000, wherein a team attempted to find out if saltwater crocodile eggs can be behaviorally imprinted by odors exposed to only the egg. Within this, a number of eggs were exposed to strawberry essence, chosen due to being such a novel or not usually experienced odor by the species. In the end, it was found that these individuals ate 32% more of offered food flavoured with strawberry essence after hatching than control clutches that were not exposed to it, showing a significant preference from pre-hatched scenting. Could this be used to influence and improve food item preference in captive reptiles? For example, snake species known to be difficult feeders or require scented or specific food items such as fish, amphibians or invertebrates. Eggs are complex, and the development of embryos inside even more so. Are there things we can learn from this and now apply to captive incubation? For example, is incubating eggs singly causing neonates to develop and hatch as though they are in a predator-rich environment with multiple non-existing stressors, thus leading to more stressed, less social animals? We probably need more studies to know for sure, but we certainly should listen to these potentials, as the data so far is significant. Does incubating clutches together produce less stressed, more social and more captive successful young? I feel it would be a disservice to speak so long on eggs and not include some information on snakes and the maternal care they can show. Many snake species are known to provide not only care for the eggs themselves once laid, but will also remain with the hatched young, even if it reduces the mother's own chance of survival. This is true of Python natalensis, or Southern African pythons. A seven-year study on the species in the wild found incredible reproductive behaviours, with gravid females basking much more carefully than non-gravid, using facultative melanism, wherein they will darken so as to absorb more heat more easily. They would sacrifice up to 40% of energy reserves incubating and then protecting a single clutch, then spending multiple years recovering before breeding again. Do we breed some snakes too often? They would not only stay with the egg clutch through the whole of incubation, they would also stay for about two weeks after they have hatched, continuing to leave to bask, then return to warm the clutch that the young are gathered on, allowing them to bask in this delicate period in safety. This shows us that snakes may not be uncaring robotic mothers, but will behave at stark detriment to themselves to increase the chance of survival of her young. A similar study on Liasis fuscus, Australian water pythons, showed that a single population of pythons can have differing incubation methods, the reasons for which being the quality of the chosen nest. Mothers that laid in more secure nests with more static, easily controlled conditions would maternally incubate the eggs for only approximately 20 days, whereas those who nest in places with less cover and more wide-ranging conditions would stay and maternally incubate for up to 50 days longer. These snakes are able to weigh up the pros and cons to both the survival chance of the clutches and of themselves. Are we giving them enough choice consideration when breeding snakes? 
Reptilithology, especially regarding snakes, is very under-researched. Everything we know so far points at there being an incredible amount more to learn about the animals we confidently breed. For example, parental care of eggs and young is known in over 100 snake species and indications are that the true number is much larger. Equally, we truly know very little about their eggs. Please check out the citations and further reading list link in the video description to see more incredible notes on reptile eggs and parental care. Thank you for watching and please never stop learning.